Hello, hello, I totally got sidetracked then. I went to go and get a permanent marker to write a list and I ended up drawing this. I don't know what happened, the procrastination at its finest. But anyway, let's get on with the video. So if you don't know, for the last fair few months I've been working on a museum that I'm planning to open pretty damn soon after all of this COVID malarkey's over. I've really got to get my act together and sort of finish it now because it's getting closer to the crunch time and you know, like there's only so much one person can do, but I'm working at it, I'm just chopping away just getting on getting on getting on and as you can see now it's got a doodle uh, yeah. So the next fair few videos are going to be focusing on little projects around here to sort of get them done. Either on the Look Mum No Computer channel, which is this, or the Museums channel, the Museum of Everything Else, which is more focused around the non-musical related obsolete technology kind of things. For instance, this lovely Russian Nixie Tube calculator is going to be one of the next projects that I'm going to be working on that channel. I basically need to get this up and running so I can display it with the other vacuum tube based technologies and stuff. As you can see, this is a big mama calculator just before there were kind of integrated chips that basically did pretty much all of the jobs a calculator needed. This has got loads of logic in it so it's going to be a little bit of a fun project kind of prodding around. Hopefully it's only going to require a few capacitors but oh do you never know, you never know. Anyway, so what's the video on today? Well it is about something that I'm really quite behind on and you know this is sort of a modular synth kind of YouTube channel. You would have thought that the modular synth for the museum would be done by now but it's empty. The case is empty. Just yesterday I put a Meanwell power supply into it. I'm not not sure whether it's going to need more, but we'll wait and see. Gosh, bloody Nora. Oh yeah. Now this case is absolutely awesome. It's been built by Modular Perfection, a UK based modular synthesizer case maker, and they make custom to order Eurorack cases. However, now they also make Cosmo format cases. It's absolutely amazing to know that Cosmo format actually has companies out there that are given the option of, you know, making Cosmo format cases. So if you're interested in your own top quality Cosmo case, well, the links are below to Modular Perfection. So fire them an email, ask them questions. It's basically an oversized Eurorack case. It's got the metal rails. It's made of an absolutely beautiful wood. I don't know my wood, but this is definitely wood. So I'm quite excited to fill this up so people can play on the modular synthesizer. So a couple of weeks ago now, I put up a Cosmo format safety valve. It's this one right here. And yeah, it's very similar to the original one. It sounds pretty beefy. That got me thinking, I wonder what it sounds like if I put a few of these together and then plug these in. Initially I was going to build a hundred of them but it's a little bit overkill. They are quite cheap to build, the component count is pretty low but you know a hundred is pushing it. So in this video I'm going to build ten of these and see what it sounds like plugging in ten vacuum tube distortions one after the other. Who knows? So first let's just put one together and see how it's done. Okie dokie, this is everything we're going to need to put it together except for the jacks and the knobs. Somehow I forgot to put those in that shot. Anyway, first we put in the resistors, all of the resistor values, it doesn't matter which way around the resistors go, just make sure they go in there properly. And then after that, after you've done all the soldering, this is the most of them, you just solder them down and then do ba do ba do ba do wait a little bit. Oh, hurry up Sam, come on, chop chop, snip off all the legs and then carry on putting things in. Start with the capacitors, the low capacitors and then the IC chip socket. Everything that's low and start working your way up into the larger components and stuff and then you'll be done in no time. Bend around the small LED this is the signal LED that goes behind the valve. It makes the valve look very nice and snazzy. You'll see in a little bit. And then do all the tall electrolytic capacitors, this, that, and the other. And then put in the all of the headers and then the power supply socket. And you should be nearly done for the actual soldering of the components. There isn't actually many components in this module at all. And then you put in the potentiometers, the switch, and the other LED. Don't solder them down yet until you've bolted it all down and making sure it's all in line. And then you solder them all in. This ensures that it's all nice and straight and then it's all you know structurally sound and then you put in the other jack board this is the one that's got the jack sockets in so you kind of wiggle it around with the other kind of pin header and then you bolt this down when you're sort of happy and then you do the soldering on this as well yet again making sure it's nice and straight and structurally sound and then pretty much you're done except for the vacuum tube but we'll put the vacuum tube on in a sec when Sam hurries the heck up and tests it just to see if there's any magic smoke no we're okay so now it's time to pop in the valve you can test it without soldering it down first but then it's always good to just solder it down make sure there's plenty of solder on there don't be too quick don't be too slow on soldering it and then finish it off by putting the knobs on so I did that last night on a patreon live stream and it took me about 25 minutes to build so it was quite quick so it should take me you know give or take three hours maybe to build the other nine by the way a quick note about the build is the heater filament in the valve this is wired through a 27 ohm resistor on the back and this has been proven to be a little bit on the big side uh, my recommendation is either A to pop 
a 10 ohm resistor in there, the same as the ones that are either side of the power connector or just completely go straight through. Like I've built a few of these now, I've built about four of these and they've been fine. But the one that I built yesterday, I used a different type of 27 ohm resistor and it, the valve came out a little bit quiet. It was actually not heating up enough. So I just shorted it. So if you find the safety valve is a little quieter than you expect, then just use a cut off component leg and just solder a short over that 27 ohm resistor and you should be, should be good. Anyway, I'm gonna get set up and build nine of these. So basically, just a quick of a bit of a, bit of an insight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building a few resistors and I'm gonna change the camera shot. So basically, what you're seeing is through the camera that is filming the time-lapse. So the time-lapse camera is actually shooting the video whilst it's uh, got HDMI out to the streaming. So like, you, you're watching what's being filmed. So now it's put in the case and all the power is connected. It uses Eurorack power cables, it uses Eurorack power supplies. The only difference is the modules are larger and they're big jacks. Even down to the fact that you can use Bifaco Nerlies to put in the modules so they're easy to remove, but I'll probably put them in a bit more permanent in this one. Right, let's turn it on. The heater filaments are all on the negative voltage lines. So the power supply is gonna be pretty all right with this, but even if it wasn't, it would just shut down anyway. It wouldn't set up in flames, hopefully, he says, fingers crossed. <gasps> When nothing's plugged into these modules, they go into self-oscillation mode, and as you can see, they're starting to self-oscillate with each other. Now, if you've seen any of my synth performance videos, you'll probably know what this sounds like. It's the bit where it just gets a lot louder. That's what this module does. It just makes it a lot more crunchy and a lot more louder. That's not the only thing it can do. This can oscillate and it can be a preamp for things like microphones and guitars even. You can literally plug a guitar into this and it will push it up to synthesizer levels. Right, okay, I knew I was being a little bit optimistic with this test. Basically, the power supply was not giving enough oomph, which is perfectly fine. Usually a modular synth with just a single power supply like this probably only at most requires two of these safety valves. Any more than it's a little bit of an overkill and you probably need to rethink it. So what I've done is I've widened another bench power supply into the modular synth bus. So this is sending more amps into the synthesizer bus and now I'm able to power them all without having to worry about it. The first test I wanna do with this is try the Bart megaphone test, you know, where he, you know, wire up loads of megaphones. So I'm gonna wire up a mic into the first one and just plug it through and just see what happens. Let's try the microphone. So number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, So I've now dragged this monstrosity to my flat because I can't try out a bass synthesizer line because there's no bass synth in there yet. So I'm gonna plug this into Cosmo and see if it sounds any more saturated than it does with just uh, one of them. Let, let's see. <laughs> So 
so after messing around a bit I realised that yeah maybe after three of these safety valves it sort of starts sounding the same and a little bit messy however when it's feeding back on itself it starts to be pretty funky and all of the knobs for some reason become different parameters in just a weird noisy kind of fest of noise <laughs> So yeah, that is the safety valve and the steps on building the interactive synth for the museum. I'm going to get it back over there. Likely there's only going to be a couple of these safety valves in this finished synth. There's also a sequencer and drums for this interactive synth on its way, so it's going to be pretty damn snazzy. And yeah, keep an eye out on this YouTube channel and the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel in the next month or so because I'm really cracking on and getting this stuff done because it's nearly done and there's just a few more touches and then there'll be an opening date and this, that and the other. And yeah, the full length fly streams that I mentioned in this video are still available to watch over on my Patreon. I've also included a bunch of extended sound packs from the guitars, the microphones and a bit of the Jimmy jamming and stuff like that so you can mangle it and mess around with it. That is available over on the Patreon as well. And yeah, basically the Patreon is supporting this whole venture of getting this sort of museum up and running. But yeah, until next time, I've been Look Mum No Computer. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it.